Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. In this video I want to talk about how to add a carrier into your VC dial. I had another video on how to add a carrier, a slip trunk, but it seems it was not very clear because I had a lot of comments and questions on uh, why do we need a SIP carrier and what are the steps. So I uh, decided to record this video that I'm actually explaining a, a method that you can test yourself and you can create an account and have a SIP trunk and call the testing numbers. So first of all, why do we need a SIP trunk or why do we need a carrier in the VCDL? When you are set up with the VCDL, uh, you have your own internal phones. Of course, they can call each other if you want, but what's the point? Uh, usually you want to call your customers uh, to talk to them. To achieve that, you need to have a way to uh, communicate to the telco. Uh, in the previous times, you could, you, you could go and to, the telco and to the telecom and get, for example, E1 or T1 links, but nowadays uh, you can just order a SIP trunk from any SIP trunk providers. There are uh, plenty in the world, but I choose signal wire here for this video. Uh, I had uh, two reasons. One reason, the first reason is that the signal wire is the team behind the free switch, an amazing telephony, open source telephony uh, package that I want to support them. And the second is that signal wire is using TLS transport. Uh, it's not UDP or TCP, it's TLS. So. Uh, it's a little tricky. I mean, it's tricky to configure that. So uh, I wanted to especially focus on the signal wire to teach you how you can enable TLS transport in the VC dial because by default it's not uh, supported in the VC dial. If you can configure the signal wire, I'm, I'm sure you can configure any other trunks as well. So let's get it started. First of all, we need to. Uh, first of all, you need to. Uh, go to SignalWire, uh, SignalWire.com, create an account that's very straightforward so I don't uh, show to you. You can just create your account and uh, pay attention, you need to top up at least 10 USD so that you are able to call, to call out. After you log into your control panel, go to the SIP and create a SIP account. Just create on the new and then you are able to create a, a SIP account. Give it a name a password, color ID is not needed, set as default, you don't need to send uh, any special uh, phone number here, encryption as default, default codecs, and default cybers. So just give it a name and password. I have already created one, I gave it name a test VC dial, and my password is www.omidblog. So if you go here, it's just a username, test VC dial, and this is my server, that is automatically created here and then all settings are default. Next step is, is that you need to assign a DID to your trunk. So uh, go to the phone numbers, create new, uh, buy any number that you want. You can select based on the region or code area or different. I just selected any random number. So this is my DID. As you can see, this is the number. This number is useful when someone wants to uh, call you or when you want to call out this number will shown to the customer. You need to click edit settings. This option, this part is just needed for the incoming calls. So uh, because uh, for the incoming calls you need to select is it a fax or is it a voicemail. The signal wire uh, has a lot of uh, features that you can uh, use for example API programming to control the voice. So or or even you can receive fax with the same number. Here we want to have a SIP trunk and incoming call, so we need to select the voice calls. Uh, handle SIP incoming as SIP endpoints. Uh, there are other options, for example, if you want to send to a free switch, or for example, if you want to do a programming, pro programmatically control the voice, so you can choose them. But here we want to send to our uh, SIP endpoint that here is VCDial, so select SIP endpoint. And just save. You don't need to choose. You don't need to change any of these options because you are not using actually LAML webhooks, so it doesn't matter. That's it on the uh, signal wires uh, side. It's very straightforward. Now let's go to the uh, VC dial. In the VC dial, you need to add a carrier or a trunk. Uh, as I have explained, your VC dial needs to have a SIP trunk 
to a provider here, signal wire, in order to be able to call the PSTN numbers. That's what you want to do. So go to the carriers, add a new carrier. I already added here one. And then you need to set the options here. I put all options in my uh, actually GitHub. So if you go to my uh, GitHub omid dash mahajrani slash VC dial, you will see how to register signal wire ship trunk as a carrier in the VC dial. It's easier to copy paste from here. I put the link in the description. Uh, for each of them, register a string. So here you have a, the, the carrier ID and carrier name is not important. You can set anything. Uh, registration string is what is important here. So uh, if I go here, the registration string is the uh, this reserve word, your username, your password, at your server. This server is what you have here. If you go to the SIP, you can see this is your server. Okay. And then you have uh, account entry. In the account entry part, you need to set uh, your trunk configurations. For example, here uh, we name it test VC dial, the our, the our username we put here, NAT uh, force our port and comedia because our server is behind the NAT. I don't have any public server, public IP on my VC dial. If your uh, VC dial is on the internet and you have a public IP address for it, so you don't need this option. But because my server is, as you can see, is 10, 10, 10, 2, 2, 1. This is a server behind the NAT. Uh, it's a private IP address. So I need to set this option as NAT for our port and comedia. The port is 5060, the default port. Insecure invite and port is uh, helping us to actually do not authenticate for the incoming calls. You can set the host name, username, from domain, the IP address of the Server, of course, the from username and username are your username. As you can see, they are test VC dial. Secret is your password. I set here as your password. Context is for the incoming call. So when someone calls you, it will go to this trunk inbound uh, context. And what codec you want to allow? Of course, here I can uh, allow any other codecs, for example, like uh, EULA, ELA, or whatever. I just for the testing, I put here as EULA. But based on your codex, you can set any other option as well. So here is what you are copying here. And you have global string. This global string just for um, to make our life easier so that we don't need to copy this uh, test trunk uh, everywhere. And uh, so we put as this test SIP trunk as SIP test VCDL. Test VCDL is our username here. So this is the name of our channel as a variable that we will use in our dial plan. So what is dial plan? I put a very uh, a small, a very simple part here. I wanted to call this number, but my campaign prefix is nine. It means that when I want to call out, the system will automatically add a nine in front. Where this nine comes from, I will show you in the next step. But this is the number that I want to call. Look at here, this is, the first one is always like this, so you need to put AJ, this is needed for the call leg in the VC dial. The second one is that, uh, if someone calls uh, 804, the number that I want to call, the system will add the nine automatically uh, out in the front, so uh, I just add this to my dial plan. Dial SIP trunk, and this is the number that I want to call. So if someone calls this number, if the system calls this number, it will automatically call dial test trunk. This test trunk means SIP test VC dial. And then it will send the number that I want to call. This is a sample just to call one a specific number. It will be useful for our testing. So in order, so before we go to the next step, that is uh, by default, most of the trunk providers, if you set these options, you are already good to go but not here. Before I go to Y and configure the TLS, I want to show you uh, where this nine prefix comes. If you go to your campaign, for example, here I created test campaign, detail view, and if you select for the prefix, 
We have a dial prefix and manual dial prefix. We added a nine here. So it means that when your users call, for example, eight, blah, 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 it will automatically add a nine in front. Why we need this? Because you may have multiple campaigns and each campaign may need to use a SIP trunk. This is how we differentiate which campaign is using which trunk. So this is why we add a prefix to the campaigns. If I go back to the carriers, you can see signal wire is already at the nine. This nine comes from the campaign. So this is the default configuration for most of trunk providers. But if you try calling out or try calling in, this won't work here. And if you know how to debug using SNG rep, you will understand that the transport is the TLS. It means that it will encrypt the traffic. <clears throat> Sorry, in order to um, in order to mm, accept uh, TLS connections, we need to tell our asterisk to actually listen on the TLS, enable the TLS uh, functionality. In order to do that, you need to open sip.conf. You can use any. Uh, you can. You need to SSH your server. Let me just SSH here. You need to go to etc asterisk and open the sip.conf. If you are a, a Windows guy and you don't know how to uh, connect your a Linux box, you can use a application, a Windows application, WinSCP. So with the WinSCP, you can use your Windows to actually log into your uh, Linux and edit any file that you want. Here I'm using a Vime editor. As you can see, I opened the file and I added these options. I wanted to enable the TLS. I wanted to actually bind to my internal IP address to my IP address of the system and also I give it a, a CRT file and a PEM file. So, but the CRT and PEM files you need to generate them. By default they are not in the VC dial. In order to generate them, refer to my blog, you need to download a script. This is a, a script by the asterisk itself, so it's as TLS cert and uh, run this command after you have downloaded here with w get I downloaded and then with dot slash I run the uh, cert and I set uh, uh, any name you can set uh, for example pbx.omit.blog this is if it can be your uh, actual domain name but you can put any fake name here as well and then a company name I put just omit.blog and then uh, output in the etc asterisk keys so now uh, when you are running this uh, script, it will automatically generate in the etc asterisk keys, asterisk.pem, and also ca.crt. Uh, and after you have uh, enabled this option in the sip.conf, you need to go to your asterisk by running asterisk-r-cbv and then type sip reload. Okay, when you type sip reload, it will automatically reload that configuration file and then you have TLS enables. If you type sip show peers, you will see that uh, the test VC dial, the trunk that we have, is okay. So the options that I have set are right. There are another command that is very useful, sip show registry. The sip show registry should show register. As you can see here, my trunk is all registered and ready to call in and call out. Um, that's it. Then uh, the normal calling out is you just need to log into your agent panel and uh, dial out. The main point was how to actually set up the trunk here and how to assign a, a prefix in the campaigns. Uh, I just wanted to add this uh, item here as well as uh, previously we just wanted to call a specific number. Uh, so I add the number and then after my SIP trunk, I pass the exact number that I want to call. If you want to have a, a general rule, for example, here I add a rule nine dot. Nine dot means nine means everything that starts with nine, and dot means actually. Uh, of course, here I need to add a. 
underscore here as well. Sorry, I forgot that because it's a rule. Uh, everything that starts with nine and that dot means uh, anything with any length. This is a dangerous rule, but uh, it's easy to understand. So I just put it here. So if, for example, you put nine, uh, one, two, three, four, what will happen? That means one, two, three, four. It will dial our trunk. That is our test VC dial. It will add a plus one in front, in front of the number, one, two, three, four. And it will emit one number in front. For example, imagine I dialed nine, one, two, three, four. X10 will be, the X10 variable here will be nine, one, two, three, four. And X10 double dot one means remove nine, remove one digit from the front so it will remove this and then it will add plus one in front so it will add plus one in front so it will call plus one one two three four this is what we want right we want to emit the nine the prefix that we have added in our campaign and then add a plus one because signal where if you pass zero zero or any other format it won't accept you need to add plus then the country code and then the number that you want to dial Yes, okay, that's, that was about how we are registering uh, as a carrier in a uh, VCDL. Of course, if you are not using signal wire and if their transport is TCP or UDP, you don't need to do this extra step that is actually adding a SSL cert. Uh, you just need to do the steps before uh, this SSL cert and then you, are, you should be able to call out. Of course, each trunk provider may have their own uh, configuration or made own uh, SIP packets and SIP headers that uh, of course for them you need to learn more about how to debug the SIPs. I have a video on uh, SNGREP, uh, please watch that That and run the SNGREP if you have some problems on the uh, trunk configuration because even if you want to send the trace to me or anyone else I will ask you to give me the trace of the SIP and SNGREP command is the command that you can use to uh, trace and see what's going on. So watch that video if you want to register, if you want to learn how to register to any trunk. But this configuration will work for most of the trunks. Yes, that's it. And uh, thank you for your watching. If you have any question, please put in the comments. And uh, mm, I'm usually not uh, because my email is. Uh, I have a lot of emails. I usually answer to the uh, comments in the. YouTube much more faster than my emails. Uh, so I will appreciate if you uh, just put comments in the YouTube. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next video.